We have this transmission bandwidth and distortion. It has been proven that Jn of x decreases as x increases. So, for the major sideband, R present between Fc plus minus and Fn. For x less less than one significant sideband in range Fc plus minus Fn, according to the Carson's rule, dt is 2k plus Fn, which is 2 into Fn, k slash Fn plus 1, 2 Fn d plus 1, where deviation ratio is k by Fn. For a better approximation of all equipment design, dt is 2 Fn d plus 2. For PM signal 2k plus fm now 2 m t k p plus 1 fm so you can check it out also uh, i have a confusion in this uh, this particular expression but yeah the rest of it is correct uh, most of the time first look at for the if the deviation is greater greater than 1 or less less than 1 and doesn't lie in the range of 2 to 10, then the balance uh, frequency is 2fm d plus 1. Deviation ratio is k by fm, where k is deviate, frequency deviation, which we have already, uh, which we know by, so sorry about that extra zooming, but yeah, I'll, I was talking about Look out for uh, the deviation ratio. Deviation ratio that we generally see is by expression 10. Okay, now this is um, the deviation ratio that we actually see. So uh, this d and this uh, d is equals to del f. You can say so. Going forward with FM generation by indirect method. The narrowband signal can be modulated by using a DSP-SC modulator. This is a particular expression for NBFM and NBPM. The output of this NBFM also has some magnitude variations. A non-linear device limits the amplitude of a bandpass signal to remove distortion. The hard limiter is often used. For cos theta greater than 0 is 1 and cos theta less than 1 is 0. Moreover, the zero crossing is preserved in the output because with the n, n is there. When the input is 0, the output is also 0. You can see that there is a hard limiter which is passed through a band pass filter to get the particular signal. Next is the generation of white band signal. And for generation of wideband signal, we use a frequency multiplier. Frequency multiplier is a non-linear device where the signal is squared and twice of that frequency, twice of its center frequency by passing through a bandpass or is happening to you. Now in multiplication where beta is equal to n beta, k is equal to n k and fc is equal to n fc. Moving with the next, uh, kindly look at this solution question very carefully and we will be discussing a solution in the preceding slides so in the succeeding slides now if you see the like I very very clearly illustrated this example clearly to you have a look or look at it try to understand it how it is done and why it is done and then you will realize that it is much simpler to calculate these in all this when you know how to calculate it. So the local oscillator gets you a frequency of 440 kilohertz and with M1 and M2 having different numbers. Now a direct method of to generate an FM is being shown in this example. In that what we use is a bias semiconductor diode that can be used as a capacitor whose capacitance varies with, with the bias voltage. The omega naught is 1 upon root LC. The variable capacitance is given by this formula. Maximum capacitance variation is twice of del F C naught by 2. I think this would, this would be cancelled out. 
This method often results in a poor stability parameter. Often a feedback is used to stabilize the frequency. The demodulator, have a look at it. Slow detection. Balanced modulator and zero crossing. It is always in the zero crossings that we find the information. And last but not the least, the FM demodulation with PL. It is used to track the phase and the frequency of the carrier component of the incoming signal. The operation of PLL is similar to the feedback. If the feedback system is not equal to the input signal, the difference is the difference will change the feedback signal until it is close to the input signal. The output of the error signal, if the frequency are same of both the input and the VCO signal voltage controlled oscillator, then both are said to be in a log range. If the phase are same of both the input and the VCO signal, then both are said to be in the capture range. So friends, this was all for today. I hope you liked the lecture slides. Um, if you like them, please do subscribe to my channel and like the video. Keep on test yourself by solving more and more questions. And for more videos, come on on prepare for the channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.